You can tell the older jadeite because it glows. And uranium stopped being added to the glass in 1940s. One of the things you will always find while out shopping at the antique malls is lots of Fenton. This is a crest pattern. This is aqua crest to be exact. It was made in the early 1940s and there's actually a lighter version of blue that would be in the 19, 1963 to be exact. They made a little bit lighter version. But this is the aqua. Now. This was made, all the crests were made somewhere between the 40s and the 80s, and there is many different colors of crest patterns. This is also Fenton. This is a melon-shaped vase, as the bulbous part there looks like a melon. It comes in lots of colors, too, and these were cased. Here is your classic hobnail, but this is also a blue opalescent. This was made from 1939 to 1955. This is a piece of depression glass in a yellow, and you can see not every dealer takes the time to figure out what things are, so that's where you do have to be a little savvy if you're going for it. Fenton made many different products, bells, shoes, all kinds of things. This is an example of custard glass, and this is when they started to decorate. Now, this was in the 60s they started decorating. Early pieces will have the full name of the artist, and then later they switch to the first initial and last name. There's actually a website where you can look up every single artist that they had. It's uh, fentonfan.com. Here's more Fenton. Fenton's very prolific and people still love to collect it. So it's not to be ignored. You just have to know how much you can pay so that you can make a profit. Here we have some pink depression glass. It comes in all kinds of patterns from this ring pattern to some more common patterns. Those are some frosted pink candle holders. Um, some diamond etched, super big variety of depression glass. I steer away from depression glass for the most part. Again, you really need to know what you're picking up and what value it has. Now this little purple vase, uh, it does not have a Fenton feel to me. It's a, We call that enameled when they have the little hand painting on it. I like the crimping at the top. And it's very lightweight, that's what I was trying to show you there. Um, compared to Fenton, this had a, a lightweight feel to it, more of a Victorian glass. And so I went ahead and I picked this one up. Now this piece looks like depression glass, but it's actually a company called Mosher, M-O-S-S-E-R, I think I'm saying that right. They came about in the 1970s, so this is not depression glass. This is a replica of depression glass, and it's got a much different feel. It feels, um, I guess you'd say like waxier. Now this is a piece of Fenton. It's a, a beaded, they're just calling it beaded. I don't know what the actual pattern name is. Um, it's pretty fancy. Quite a beautiful piece and the pricing there is is pretty spot on now this is the glass that i personally collect it's blue opalescent from a number of different makers the dealer here says this is a northwood bead and i can't read that um it's probably priced very accurate for its value but i had to be good and not get that today and i left it behind here is a, an open edge basket weave carnival glass. Now, this is a true carnival glass, but this is known as marigold, and marigold is probably the least desirable color in carnival. 
only because it is out there. And you can see that had a straw mark in the bottom. It's not a crack, it was a straw mark. So carnival glass comes in a variety of different colors. And I'm gonna show you another piece of carnival glass, only this one is not, it's carnival glass, but it's not old carnival glass. This is made by Imperial in their roses pattern. And the Imperial pieces are super thick and heavy. And uh, that's why I say you've got to get your hands on this. And if you were to feel the difference in the, the, the texture and the feel of these different pieces of carnival glass, you would understand what I'm talking about better there. Here's another piece of blue opalescent. $26 is a really good price. I mean, that's, that's pretty spot on. Again, I was good though, and I left it behind as much as I wanted to buy it. Again, here's another piece of carnival glass, and it just has a look and a feel that you gotta get your hands on. Now, if this didn't have the label that says that this is Bohemian Czech glass, Many of you would think that this is Murano. It's got all the characteristics of Murano. It's heavy. I'm trying to figure out how to pick it up one-handed. The Pontal is polished and smooth. It's got a little summer so effect in there. So just keep in mind that not all of the glass that you see like that is Murano, and it's actually okay. Um, as you can see, this dealer knows what they've got, and they've got a really good price on there. Now this is, like I like to call it, newer carnival glass. Um, I stay away from this. Look at the shine to it. It's just way shinier than your normal old carnival glass. It's vintage. That's why I didn't say vintage carnival glass. It's still vintage, uh, but it's made by like Indiana glass and Imperial glass, and it's not as desirable, so I stay away from it. This is what's known as a as satin glass or a frosted glass. You could call it both things in your titles. Again, not super desirable. That's probably on the top side of, of market value. And I just saw this piece. You can see it's got a little bit different shine to it, probably made by a different company. Um, I would not call that one satin glass because it's got that shine to it but it's a frosted depression glass. Now we have some art glass and you can see, this is why I love antique malls because many of these things still have their original labels. So you know what they are. This is Polish glass. Now, if it didn't have that label, you might not know that, but because of that, you can get your hands on it. You can feel it, you can pick it up. You can look how it's constructed so that when you find unmarked Polish glass, 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 you can say, oh, okay, that's very similar to that other piece that I had identified. This piece here, monstrously heavy, monstrously heavy. And I thought there had been a label on the bottom. It looks like there was at one time. So again, don't know who done it, but you could definitely get a good price for a piece like this, just calling it art glass. It's an art glass shell. It's beautiful, very quality. Here's another piece of Fenton, and you can see Fenton got fancier in the later years. Um, there they put a little opalescent swirl in there and it's got a crest and this has the Fenton logo. The logo started in 1970 and if you look real close you should be able to see if it was made in the 80s it'll have an 8. If it was made in the 90s it'll have a 9 and if it was made in the 2000s it'll have a little 0. This is silver crest. It's not actually silver in color, so it can be a little deceiving. It's got a clear crest around the edge. And this I also believe is a Fenton piece, and you'll see why I say that. On the bottom, there is that hand painted by and the artist signature, and it's got that classic Fenton shape and design. This was fascinating to me. It is a huge chunk of just raw glass. I mean, literally, this is what this is how glass starts. You take this and you melt it in really super hot fire and uh, make it liquid. 
This is one of my favorite Fenton patterns. This is Marina or Murina. I'm not exactly sure how you say that, but uh, I love, love, love this pattern that was started back in the 1960s. And it stands for Vessel of Gems. That's what Marina means. And this one's the Rose and Adventurina. That's a good price, actually, $75 on that. Now I'm going to show you some pieces that are just, these are just art glass. There is nothing super special. And I know that because by picking it up, it's got no weight to it. It's not really refined in its pattern. I mean, $25 is about, that's about spot on. And you could get that on eBay. Um, so I'm not saying that this dealer is overpriced. I'm just saying this kind of a glass doesn't have a lot of appeal to me uh, because it's not a real high-end glass. But again, you learn that by just really, you get your hands on the good stuff and then you pick this stuff up and you start learning the difference. Now, Murano glass is another one. I am not a fan of the white cased Murano glass because it is, is, it is the most heavily reproduced by the Chinese. Um, this doesn't have the weight to it that I would expect from a true Murano piece. That is one of the telltale signs. Um, so they're asking 38 and you know, either way, that is not a bad price for a piece of nice art glass. So I'm, I'm not, I'm not dissing them on the price on this. I just don't like it. Now here is a beautiful piece of old, old carnival glass. You can see there's imperfections and that's okay. This was not real quality glass at the time. It was heavily produced, but look at the sheen, the iridescent sheen. The more beautiful that rainbowy color, the better for your buyers. Now here are some antique pieces of EAPG. These were made as souvenir pieces, and you can see on this one, it is lightly marked. Now, this is known as flashed glass, which is actually a thin layer of the red glass put over the clear glass. In a moment, I'm going to show you another glass that's known as flashed, but it's actually not. It's stained, and I'm going to give you a comparison in a second. But yeah, these are made in the late 1800s to early 1900s, and many times they will have a date on them. These were really nice. These would sell for about $25 a piece on eBay. And there's some of that shiny glass again, which I just stay far away from. And I noticed the little piece of moon and stars here in the Amberina first. Very mid-century and collectible, but behind that, I wanted to pull out. Now these are King's Crown, um, and these are ruby flashed. I'm sorry, ruby stained. <laughs> stained, like think painted, painted on stained color. These scratch super easy. But here, I'm gonna carry it over to that other glass so you can see the difference. This stained glass was made more in the 50s, 60s, maybe even 70s, whereas the other was made in the early 1900s. Here we have some, this is depression glass, but it is uranium glass. We call it glowy glass because it glows under black light. And I just happened to have brought my black light this time. This is a piece of stretch glass and the dealer here called this Satin glass. It is not satin. Satin doesn't have that iridescence to it. The stretch glass has that iridescence because it's actually made with metallic sprays, similar to Carnival. They spray the metallics on it, then they reheat it. This was introduced in 1916 and was super popular in the 20s to 30s. I did go ahead and pick up this piece because it's worth double what that dealer is asking for it. Here is another example of the moon and stars. It comes in all different shapes and sizes and colors. Now here is more modern glass, but this is really well done modern art glass. It's a pitcher and margarita glass set. This has a lot of value to it and people love it. 
Here is another piece of carnival. This is the Dragon and Lotus pattern by Fenton. This pattern brings really good money, like hundreds of dollars, depending on the color. Now this is not one of the best colors, but this is a really good price. And because of that, I picked this piece up and I should be able to double my money. This pattern has fooled me in the past, but no more. It is Franciscan Madeira. There, it is not fire and light. Here's another piece of cheaply made art glass. And it's a quality thing. Like once you see quality pieces made, you're gonna start knowing the difference, mainly on the feel. That's why I say you've got to pick this stuff up. Cheaper glass is lighter glass and it's not put together as well. Whereas these are a really nice pair of Victorian cruets. Um, these are enameled. This is a satin glass. It's actually a cased satin glass. Multiple techniques used, applied handles, the details, the painting. Those are all signs of quality that you want to look for. Here is a spectacular piece of Blanco. It's a crackle glass. Um, Blanco is quality, 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 and you can feel it. And I'm holding it up to the light there so you can see that Amberina, which is the red, orange into yellow. Really a spectacular piece. And Blanco, all other mid-century glass, is super popular right now. Now here is a piece marked as Murano, but now that I saw that Bohemian glass and got the feel of that, I came back and I'm like feeling this going, you know, this does not feel like Murano. And then I spot this piece and the weight difference between these two pieces was really significant, which also led me to believe that the darker piece is not Murano. This piece is Murano. It's got the Bulacante, which is the little controlled bubbles, and they're super controlled, as you can see there. It's got the smooth pontal. Most of all, it's got all those little scratches. You want those scratches. That says age. That happens from shifting on the little dust particles on a shelf for years and years and years. Really nice piece, and the price was right, but I did decide to leave it behind today. Again, here is another cheaper piece of art glass. Just pretty art glass. Not that it doesn't have resale value, but this piece would not require a whole lot of research because I'm not gonna ever figure out who done it. If I were to buy this piece, I'd sell it as a nice piece of art glass. That's all it is. Probably made in China. Um, and again, you've gotta get your hands on this stuff and you're going to learn the difference. And what video would be complete without some jadeite? Now, jadeite started back in the 1930s. And um, I'm going to shine my black light on this in a second here. But you can tell the older jadeite because it glows. And uranium stopped being added to the glass in 1940s. So if it glows, it's probably authentic jadeite. Now, jadeite has been heavily reproduced. So you have to be careful and you have to know what you're picking up. And it's one of the reasons that I do stay away from the jadeite because I simply don't have the knowledge to know how much I can pay for it. See, that piece doesn't glow. That piece glows. Those really glow. And I'm doing this through glass too. These are in a case. So those are glowing really good. But it's super popular, super collectible. People love it. So if you can get it at the right price, Pick it up. Even the repro stuff is going to sell. It's just that the, the authentic stuff is going to sell for a lot higher price. All right. I hope you enjoyed this little uh, glass hunt that I decided to do. If you liked this video, give me a thumbs up and let me know in the comments if you'd like me to do other subject matter, other types of glass, maybe specializing in, maybe some pottery. I don't know. You tell me what you want me to go on the hunt for and teach you more about. I'm happy to do it. Now with that, 
go be profitable and make it fun. And we'll see you on the next one.